What's happening? Your friendly neighborhood gadget inspector here. So I got these uh, Freewell ND filters for the Peridonafi, and I'm disappointed to say that I'm gonna have to send these back. Now, Freewell is a reputable company, and they have a really solid track record when it comes to filters for cameras and drones. So I don't wanna give the impression that it's a bad product. The problem is when the gimbal on the Anafi initializes, it doesn't like any additional weight, none at all. When you mount a filter before powering on the Anafi, the gimbal won't finish initializing and you'll get an error in the Free Flight 6 app. At least I did. Again, it's not the filters which weigh close to nothing because I get the same exact error when powering on with the lens cap on. So the lens cap that comes with the Anafi, when you power up with that on, I get the same error. Hang on though, all is not lost. If you absolutely want to mount a filter onto the camera, all you have to do is power on the drone first, allow the gimbal to finish initializing, then carefully push the filter onto the camera. This is actually the method recommended by Parrot in the instructions manual. I don't know about you, but I'm not the biggest fan of finagling with the gimbal once it's powered on, so I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that every time I go out to fly. Now, out on the parrotpilots.com forum, guys were saying that some Anafis don't have any problem with mounting filters before powering on. So you may have one or get one like that, but I didn't get that lucky. This is a nice pack though, and it goes for about $50. You get six filters, you get an ND4 up to ND64. And the ND32 and ND64 filters are uh, polarizers as well. And it comes in this plastic case with a cleaning cloth. All right, let's head outside. I wanna show you a few things. Okay, y'all, so I'm getting ready to put the Anafi up in the air. And there's a couple of things I wanna show you guys. So um, last time, I flew with the filters mounted. I was noticing these weird, uh, like micro jitters. Um, I'll see if I have some footage to show you either that or we'll see it when I do it today. But the last time I flew, it was windy. So I'm thinking that might be the cause of it. I don't know. But um, what I'm gonna do, we're gonna fly with the filter mounted and then we're gonna fly without the filter mounted. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a feature called, uh, what is it called? Lock Auto Exposure and Lock lock Auto Exposure Touch. Lock Auto Exposure is uh, you know obvious, right? So you can lock the exposure. So you can go up with your um, auto settings and lock the exposure down and it won't change. So that's great. Now lock, lock I can't even talk, lock auto exposure touch allows you to touch a specific area in the frame. Hang on, let me fix my filter. I got an ND filter on my camera. Hopefully that's better. Uh, but yeah, um, lock auto exposure touch al allows you to touch a specific area or object in the frame and it will remain um, exposed for that object or location. So we're gonna try that out, okay? Thanks for sticking with me. Okay, I want to do a couple of things here. I want to take the uh, Anafi up and we're going to do a reveal shot and I'm not going to use the lock auto for feature. <laughs> I'm not going to use the lock auto exposure feature. So you'll see the change in exposure, at least you should. Then I'm going to do the same exact reveal shot with exposure locked. So then we'll do a side by side comparison so you can really see that. 
Then the other thing I want to do is I want to take a look at uh, some of the HDR footage. Um, because while in HDR, you can't use the lock auto exposure or lock auto exposure touch features. And it's probably because that HDR, it's high dynamic range. So it's always going to be adjusting for the best dynamic range. So I don't know how that'll translate in different lighting conditions. So we'll check that out. Uh, just having a little fun here with the pair of Danafi. All right, let's go ahead and launch. I've got uh, the ND16 filter on right now. Precise home set, we're ready to go. Okay, 4K, 24 frames, we're in P-Log. Uh, we are in film mode. White balance is set to sunny. Um, I'm gonna take it up and do our reveal shot. And actually, I'm gonna kick this up to sport. Just so we can get up there a little faster. Because we're doing that reveal shot. So we don't necessarily need smooth controls right now. All right. So let's go ahead and do a reveal shot. 98 feet. And just pay attention to the changing exposure. So I'm going to do an auto exposure touch here. So that's part sky, part ground. We'll do it right about there. Let's just do it, see how it looks. Okay. Let's just do it and see how it looks. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay, that's with auto exposure touch. Okay, let's bring it back. And what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna switch the profile over to uh, natural. We're gonna turn on HDR, just like that. And we're gonna do that same shot once more. 98 feet. Do it. Okay, here's a side-by-side -side so you can really see this. So the first thing I want to point out is how the exposure for the images on the left and the right both adjusted once the shot changed. The one in the middle with AE lock on remained unchanged. Now with that said, the center shot is underexposed compared to the one on the left and the right. That's because the exposure was locked when the camera was capturing light from the sky and the ground, and it did not adjust to the change in light conditions. One thing did surprise me a little bit, and that's how much I didn't notice the change in exposure for the shot done in auto mode on the left there. Even though I could barely notice it, it was more apparent with the HDR shot. And look how much better the sky looks for the shots on the left. Hmm. <laughs> didn't expect that. Now let's watch each shot individually.
The exposure definitely changed as the camera begins to capture the sky, but did you even notice it? I didn't. Technically, this is the best shot because it's even Steven throughout, but honestly, I like the auto shot because it's brighter overall. Now I can brighten up this shot in post and it'll still be even and it will still be a better shot. And again, the exposure change is much more noticeable with the HDR on. I honestly don't like what it does to the colors either. It's not my favorite so far, but I'll keep testing it. All right, that's it for part one of episode three. Make sure to check out part two. I'll be in a different location doing some more comparisons with the ND filter on and off this time. And I'm also doing more with the AE lock feature on and off. Now this is how I get familiar with my drones. So thanks for hanging out and I hope you find this useful as well. Be good to somebody, be good to yourself. Later.